First, to an exclusive interview this evening with the former Rangers Chief Executive Charles Green. In the last hour, I've been speaking to Green at a West London hospital where he's recovering from a knee operation, putting an end to all reports that he had been arrested earlier in France. Well, Green has been uh, passionately defending his time in charge at Ibrooks and has backed Mike Ashley as the man to save it from the brink of financial collapse. I've got a family member ring me this morning saying, you told us you were in hospital, you've been arrested. What's the truth? And that's how it affects me, Jim. It's really, really wrong. Did you ever think, I mean, you're clearly very emotional about this, Charles. Did you ever think it would ever get to this stage that there would be so much rumour and counter-rumour and, and, if you want, mischief-making? No, I never did. I mean, obviously, you know, when I went to Rangers, I had no idea what I was getting involved with. And, and no one could have ever briefed you for this. And, you know, the reality is, you know, Charles Green stole all the money. When I left Rangers, there was over £18 million in the bank. Go and get a copy of the bank statement. I left on the 13th of April, driven out by the board. They didn't want me there, so I allowed, went to get away from it because of the Craig White issues that were going. We can't speak about that because it's subject to, to police uh, investigation. But the reality was, I was kicked out of Rangers. I was doing a job. And for me, you know, I left so the club moved forward. It's gone backwards. I know you've just had an operation on your knee and I know you're in severe discomfort, but I have to ask you, and let's, let's clear things up today. Have you been arrested by Police Scotland in relation to your acquisition of the assets of Rangers Football Club? No, I haven't. I've met Police Scotland on two occasions where those questions were in connection with the previous ownership of the club. And obviously it is part of an ongoing investigation, but it was nothing to do with my running of the club. And, and, and just let's be clear, Jim, let's be really, really clear. I raised £35 million for that club when it was in a much worse position than it is today. When I was sat in meetings with Rod Petrie, who was saying, oh, well, just hand the titles back, hand the cups back. And they didn't do that. So I fought for Rangers, and I'm upset <laughs> I can see you're upset, Charles. I, I don't want to take advantage of you to lie here in front of me in a hospital well, that's bed. That's unusual. How much money did you make from selling shares in Rangers since you became chief executive? I saw. What did you take out of the club, Charles? Okay, well, you know, we've we've had these numbers branded about. My salary was three hundred and sixty thousand a year. It was going to be double that, but we were in the SPL. And when we were thrown out of the SPL, I have my salary. Ali McCoyce refused to. So he kept his 760,000. And I thought that if the chief exec previously, Martin Bain, was on more than I was on. But I reduced my salary to 360. I was paid six months notice. My contract allowed me to have 12 months notice. Jim, I was entitled to stock options twice my salary, which is in my service contract. I never took them. So all of this rubbish that Charles Green raped and pillaged that club is not true. Do you still hold shares in the club? I don't know. Because I wanted Jim to cut the ties, not to get involved, and I tried to keep out of it. But it's events like today that make it impossible to leave it. And there's times when I think, well, I shouldn't have left it, I should have stayed there. Will you ever consider going back, even after something like today? Yeah, I would. It's things like today that think I should go back. And, you know, the, the current team are doing a great job. And maybe the fans don't like him, maybe they don't like Mike Ashley. I don't like Mike Ashley, but it doesn't mean that he's not the right man for the job. I actually think his team are the right people. So you're talking about Mike Ashley and Derek Lambias? Yeah, look, Derek Lambias, he might have had a charisma bypass, but actually he's a good guy doing a job. He did it at Newcastle. I met him, I took Derek Lambias into Ibrox when we did the deal for the naming rights. And there's a whole story behind that as well. The reality is that these people have done nothing but good. They haven't took anything out of Rangers, they've put money in. Sandy Easdale is exactly the same. All Sandy Easdale has done is put his hand in his pocket, pull money out, put it into the club. He hasn't took anything out of it and it, the fans are slaughtering him. Yeah, here we have then Dave King. Sandy's got one charge and one conviction against him. Dave King admitted to 40 to settle with the South African authorities. So we're going to swap Sandy Easdale, who's put money in, Dave King, who hasn't, and 
you know, where's that moving the club forward? So you would urge fans tonight, get behind what Derek Lombais and in the background Mike Ashley are trying to do? Uh, look, that club is going backwards. The fans are the greatest asset. The greatest asset that Rangers have is the fan base. And at the moment, it's dysfunctional. Even the fans don't agree amongst themselves. And what you've got to have with any club is unity. And what you've got to have... Look, Man United didn't like it when Glazers took over. But Glazers put more money into that club than Martin Edwards ever did. So this is what you have to do. Stand back and judge people. And Ashley and his team have done no wrong. Well, Charles Green was speaking on the same day that former director Paul Murray joined the Rangers Supporters Trust and Rangers First, who own 1% of the club on behalf of supporters. Murray is backing Dave King's bid to remove the current board of directors and has warned fans to ignore spin from rivals as he believes victory is close.